Sprongs, this is Dr. Sprongs and welcome to my math workshop and for today we're going to be working on frequency distribution table and how we will organize an ungrouped data into group data that will help us understand what our data set is. So if you happen to be um, watching my video for the first time, I'm Dr. Speranza and I upload math videos from algebra up until the college level calculus and for today you're going to be sitting in my classroom together with my math students here at Washington. So this is our second case, and in this second case, we are given a statistics course of 40 students. So in my 40 students, this is their score. So let's say the test is out of 100, and this is basically their points after taking that exam. So if we're going to compute for the range, what is the lowest and the highest scoring statistics test scores in my 40 students right here? What is the lowest? And what is the highest? Um, 94. 94. Now, if we compute for the range of the scores that we have here, what is 94 minus 43? 51. Now, if we're going to use the same technique that we did on the first case, on the age of boys problem, we have 51. So that means if we are going to create or construct our graph, 51 is too much, right? Yeah. 51, 52, 53, all the way to 100. So in this particular case, we're going to be using classes, which means group of numbers in our frequency because we can do that so that we can scale our graph so we don't need to write every single item in our data set. So this is our classes. We're going to have group of students who scored between 40 and 49, 50 and 59, 60, 69, and so on until we have 90 to 99 because the lowest is 43 so it will cover or will be covered in our first group of data set right here and the highest is 94 and it will be covered on our last class we call it classes okay so let's have our table of values and let's count the number of students who scored between 40 and 49 One. 40 and 49. Oh, it's 30, 47, 45. Oh, I didn't see that. Three? Three? Yeah. Six. Is that it? So let's see if we counted them right. Five. Three, six, six, eleven, nine, five. Yeah. All right. So just like what we did on the first case, we're going to draw our histogram. Yeah. So in our histogram, we'll have our x and y axis. The x axis will be your classes, uh -huh. and your vertical will be your frequency. So in your classes, we'll start at forty all the way through ninety-nine. So this is our Data set. Notice that I have this particular symbol right here in my graph. This graph means it's a breaker. It means I'm not starting at zero, I'm starting at 40. That's basically what that symbol means. Yeah, just put that if you're not starting at zero. Oh. So that they would know that you started at the minimum. Yes, if oh. the only time you don't place this symbol is when you start at one breaker right here so this is going to be my minimum which is 40 all the way through 100 and this will be my statistics course for my 40 students and my frequency and my frequency is 3 6 11 9 and 5 so i'm just going to work it out up until 11 right all right and then my horizontal line as my guide because it's easier to work with your data set if you have your vertical lines right here. And right there, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. So now that I have this, all I need to do is to match each of my classes for each of the frequency. So I have 40 to 49, I have three, so somewhere there, right? 
and then 50 through 60, I have six. So now I have my histogram, and all I need to do is to color my histogram so it looks prettier. Histogram, which is again giving you a shape <coughs> that is approximately symmetrical. All right, which means um, where is the fifty percent mark in this data set or our center? Approximately about seventy-five is the center, which means half of the students scored lower and higher than seventy points approximately all right so this is why histogram is extremely useful in statistics because it gives you the shape and it gives you a better view on what your data set is telling you so we're going to move on to the next curve that we have which is the ogive because the ogive will give us a percentile and this is probably going to give us a better understanding of what percentile is because we're talking about test scores so we're going to construct it by counting the cumulative frequency and then the relative cumulative frequency so we can be able to produce our ogive. So to do that, cumulative frequency, you start at the very first value, which is three. I'll use a different size of marker. And the second one would be three plus six. And what is three plus six? Nine plus six? 15 plus 11? 26 plus 9, 35 plus 5, and you know that you are computing it correctly if at the very last value you have your total number of students. And now for the relative cumulative frequency, you will be using your calculator. So at 3, we will be dividing 3 divided by 40, which gives me 0 0.075, which is about 7.5 or? 8%. And now we have our relative cumulative frequency, so now we're ready to draw our curve. Or, and our OJA, so let's use our numbers right here to construct and generate our OJA. And I always start at the very end, which is about 100%. And my percentile is obviously 100%, so I'm going to be... Alright, so this is my OGI for this frequency, and I'm going to connect the dot so we can use this in answering some of our questions. So notice that at 40 and 50, I'm just going to start here at the zero because it increased from zero up until 8% right here, and then going up 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 mm -hmm. up and up and now we have our ogive or the percentile graph of our statistics scores for 40 students analysis of the use of an ogive okay so in this question let's say john is one of the students one of the 40 students who took the test and the question is if john scored 85 points on this statistics, statistics test, what is his percentile rank relative to his classmates? So relative to his classmates of 40 or 39 students, what is his ranking? So where is 85 at? So let's use the data set right here. So it's a lot easier for us to read the values. 85 is between 90 if we draw a vertical line right here, the intersection right here will give us an approximate value of his ranking. So John, who scored 85, is about at the 80th percentile. So 20% of students scored above him, which is still a lot because if you'll notice, a lot of students scored 90 points in this particular test. So this is how we use an ogive or the relative cumulative frequency in analyzing our data set. We are approximating the percentile without using a calculator. So by just using the graph, we're able to do some statistical problem using our graph.
Now, next question. What percent of students scored above 90 points on this statistics test? So 90 points is somewhere here. Above it, somewhere here. So to answer the question, what percent of students scored above 90 points on this statistics test? About 90%. What percent of students scored above? Oh, what percent of students scored above 90, per, um, 90 points? About 10%. Because it's asking you above 90 points. So 10% of students in this class of 40 scored above 90 points. What is the median score? Median score of these 40 students. We'll use a note again. 40 divided by 10. About 75. 75 points. So the median score of the 40 students, this is 50%, right? It's about 75 points. So that is how we use the ogive or the relative cumulative frequency graph in answering problems about percentile. That's why statistics is powerful because not only that it's helping you organize your data sets, it's actually answering problems pertaining to your data set based on your graph. So from an ungrouped data set or just a bunch of numbers, if you organize it using statistics or frequency distribution table and construct a graph, which is histogram and uh, an ogive, you'll be able to have a more useful um, data set that could answer some questions in your experiment. Again, this is Dr. Esperanza and thank you for uh, learning statistics with me. And if you haven't liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I also have my second channel, which is basically my channel all in English. So please support my second channel and hit the subscribe button right away. And see you again next time. Uh, don't care about both directions, you just care about one of the two directions. Okay. So, what's this?